Hello everyone, welcome in to another tactics video here for FIFA 23. I'm Ash or Brahma18 as always and today we've got something a little bit different for you. I'm going to show you guys uh, the system that I've been using for my career mode, my offline career mode. It is a uh, overlapping center back 352 system, you know, highly possession orientated, very attacking. We've got both a balanced and an attacking game plan. So I'm going to take you through that today. Something a little bit different. I did share this on the FIFA Tactics subreddit as well. So go and check that out as well. Uh, if you haven't done so already, the link will be in the description. Really enjoying that on there. A um, little bit different for you guys today. Obviously, no camera, no gameplay for you. Currently in the middle of a move behind the scenes. So as a result, um, you know, things are kind of shuffling around a bit. So it's a little bit different, but something I thought that you guys would enjoy. Before we do get into it, just want to quickly say... If you haven't done so already, make sure to check out my Patreon. Link is down below. You can get access to lots of fantastic perks on there, including my FIFA 23 custom tactics package with rankings and ratings of every real system I cover on the channel, as well as exclusive tactics videos that you'll only find on Patreon, the likes of Vincent Company's Burnley. We've got Xabi Alonso's Bayer Leverkusen and lots of different systems that have been voted for from patrons. So do go and check them out. Out. So with that being said, let's talk about this system. Well, first things first, it is a 3-5-2 system, as you can see here. No changes to the uh, systems themselves. You do just want to make sure that these guys are left and right center backs. You also want to make sure that these are right and left defensive midfielders. Uh, and then other than that, we can get into the tactics. Now, first things first, before I do kind of go through this, I want to quickly say that this system is meant to be anti-meta. I feel like that most of the goals I do score on FIFA are kind of counter-attack based. You know, they just I just hit teams, teams on the counter-attack um, and it, it's very boring. So I tried to create a system that would force me to play more possessionally orientated, that would force me to try and build up through the thirds more and it would just be more enjoyable. It would be a, more of a challenge and that's what I was looking for. So this is really something for you guys that feel that way as well. Defensive style is pressure on heavy touch. Uh, and then the width is on 40. We can spread out a little bit more because of the fact that naturally um, we you know, are playing that three back and we've got three midfield and three at the back. The depth is on 100. And because, of course, I am currently using this in my Hanover career mode, I'll show you where we are in the table um, at the end of the video. It's in the lower league. Currently, we're in the Bundesliga 2. Um, and so my theory that I'm working on is that you can actually play and get away with a higher line in the lower leagues because... You're not coming up against attackers who are as fast and as elite. So I actually think it would probably be better to play with this in the lower leagues. And this is kind of a lower league kind of system. If you are kind of playing at that top level, then yeah, you can consider dropping this down maybe to something like 70 or 80. Uh, but in the lower leagues, do try 100 because I'm having a lot of fun with that. Also, if bearing in mind, we've got fairly fast centre backs. We've got Collins here who's got 85 pace. We've also got Newman who's got 87 pace. He was already at the club. Unfortunately, he's just suffered a season-ending injury, uh, so he won't be able to play. But we've also got some slower centre-backs. As you'll see here, Koulibaly, the central centre-back, can be slower. You know, he's playing more, think of that kind of Connor Cody role uh, during Nuno Espirito Santo's Wolves system. He's more of that ball-playing centre-back, and he can be slower. The offence build-up play is on slow build-up and chance creation is possession. Again, extreme possessionally orientated tactic, trying to make it less uh, kind of based around that counter-attack. And then the width is also on 40, trying to get players a little bit close together, but you don't want them too close because then you sort of lose that kind of uh, edge where they try and exploit lots of space. Um, so as a result, we have that on 40. Players in the box is on 8. Again, working on a theory currently that um, it doesn't actually give you 4 players in the box. That will give you more than that. But at the moment, we've set that to 8. And then corners and free kicks, both of these are on 4. Also, if bearing in mind, I do a lot of short corners and get a lot of fun out of them as well. So that's something that you should bear in mind. So let's talk about the player instructions then. With uh, Ron Robert Zeeler in goal, we've got comes of crosses and then sweeper keeper. And then with the three centre-backs, for the central centre-back, we've got them on conservative interceptions. Again, talking about that kind of Connor Cody role uh, that he, he played for Wolves. And then with the obviously right and left side of centre-back, we've got them both on overlap. Now, something I mentioned in the FIFA Tactics subreddit is overlap works a little bit better this year. Uh, what you will find is that when the right or left-sided player has the ball and then inverts, centre-back will then overlap. 
However, when you want them to get forward, but the wide player isn't inverting, what you'll need to do is activate that run yourself. So you'll have to use LB and A or L1 and X to get them running forward and do kind of like a give and go pass. With the two wingbacks or wide midfielders in this case, they're both on the same instructions. They're on comeback on defense for defensive support. Chance creation is stay wide to make sure they're creating that width. The support runs is get in behind and also the support and crosses get into the box for the cross. With the two central def defensive midfielders, some slightly differing roles. This left defensive midfielder is more of the aggressor, that ball winning midfielder. So his uh, instructions are cut passing lanes. He's on stay back whilst attacking. And he's also on aggressive interceptions as well. His position freedom and defensive position cover wing and stick to position. Now with Jacobs here, it's a little bit different. He's more of that roaming playmaker, more of the ball progressor, the one who's going to bring it out from defense and look to progress the ball when you can kind of dictate the tempo with him. So he's still on cut passing lanes and stay back while attacking, but this time his interceptions are on normal. Uh, and then his position freedom is also deep line playmakers getting roaming around in those pockets of space. With Tillman in attack midfield, something I mentioned on the Reddit as well, is that something you'll get a lot of fun out of with the system is to try and get a mobile attacking midfielder, a mobile central attacking midfielder. So in this case, we've got Malik Tillman on loan with an option to buy from Bayern Munich, of course, at Rangers in real life. Um, he's obviously got, you know, what, 87 pace there. And that's really, really kind of key to kind of instigating attacks. You'll get a lot of fun out of that. He's on comeback on defence to get him tracking back, get into the box for crosses, and his position freedom is actually drift wide. We like him going to support those wide men. He's very versatile, and that's another reason why you're going to look to kind of have that pacey player. With the two forwards, starting off with the right-sided striker, this guy is the false nine. So we've got Morgan Rogers in this case, and this role was really designed when I did bring him in towards the end of the window. His support runs are drift wide. Again, he's going to pick up lots of pockets of space, and we're going to play that in with the false nine as well. A very, very fun role to kind of play here because rarely do you have drift wide with a false nine. It's something that has worked out quite well. Again, it's an extreme possessional base system, so it prevents that kind of emphasis and relentless counter attacks that the gameplay kind of plays into um, and i found this to be really really good for that defense support is also on basic defensive support now with Fofana in the left side of striker role we've got the out and out forward the one who's going to look to penetrate the back line to play on the last man so his support runs are on stay central his attacking runs are getting behind and defense support is stay forward in this role really looking for a player who was kind of that complete forward. So with Fofana, of course, bear in mind this career mode was actually started before he moved to Chelsea. Uh, we've got someone who's obviously pacey, but he's also tall. He's, well, 5 foot 11, but his jumping is 82. So he can he's more effective than a lot of tall players. 88 strength as well. So he is that complete forward that we are actually looking for. Now, we've also spoke about how does an attacking game plan. Let me talk to you about how it changes a little bit. We use this one when say it's 17th minute onwards i'm really looking to press for a goal then we kind of uh say kind of you know not really bothered about stamina at that point so defensive style changes to constant pressure this time that the uh, offensive width goes up to 70 we try and stretch the game out a lot more creating a lot more space it becomes slightly more intense obviously the chance creation goes up to forward runs again very draining on stamina that's why we only use this when it is in kind of those last 10, 20 minutes of the game and you really are pushing for a goal at all costs. There's also just one tweak to the play instructions on the attacking game plan. With this case, this time Morgan Rogers as that right-sided striker is on stay forward rather than balance defensive support. And this time, both of those guys are going to obviously be those out balls going forward. You don't want them tracking back as much. You're also trying to kind of preserve their stamina a little bit as well. So that's it for the system itself, guys. As you can see in this career mode so far, I played 18 games and really enjoying it. Currently five points clear at the top of the table. The top scorers in the division and what the joint third best defense in the division. So it's really a lot of fun. Now, I haven't played this in the top division yet. I'm hoping obviously we can get promoted this season. And then we can really test it out. So any of you guys who do play this uh, tactic in kind of the elite levels and notice any difference with regards to the high defensive line, etc. Let me know. Let me know if you think there are any tweaks that will be needed. But for the lower leagues, uh, I would definitely advise this one as that kind of extreme possessional base system. Something that's been really fun to play with. Uh, and hopefully you guys will 
get a lot of fun out of it too. So with that being said, we're just about ready to round it off there. If you've got any questions about the system, please don't hesitate to let me know. Again, sorry that we've not been able to get kind of gameplay and also kind of face cam in there for this video. We will be back on that soon, so don't you worry about that. Keep an eye out for content coming uh, on the channel over the next few weeks and few months and so on and so forth. Please do subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to get notifications every time I upload for that. Don't forget to check out my Patreon. The link to that is down below. And as is the link to the FIFA Tactics subreddit created by one of my uh, lovely subscribers and patrons, Ufi Red Panda. Really looking forward to seeing kind of how that goes over the next few months or so. And also give me a follow on Twitter. The link to that is down below. Check out my video games podcast, the Ash Bros Podcast, where you can get your kind of video games fix if that's what you are looking for. And with that being said, we're going to round it off there. Thank you so much for watching. And until the next one, I will see you soon.